ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event you've all been waiting for, the release of iOS 14.5. In one corner, Apple CEO Tim Cook. In the other, the Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg. Well, folks, that's going to leave a mark. Pun intended. Eh. What we're seeing unfold in this fight is quite complicated. In fact, you're probably thinking, what's this beef all about? Apple makes phones, tablets, laptops, and more. Facebook makes social networks. Why the slugfest? The simple answer, differing views of our privacy. And it's playing out big time in Apple's new iOS 14.5. But that's just the first round. This is a fight that could shape the future of the internet, and certainly the next wave of computing. Yeah, it's a lot. So I thought it was best to explain it with the help of these guys. No, you cannot buy these, because they're just terrifying. OK, let's explain this all, starting with what brought this to a head, iOS 14.5, and a new feature called App Tracking Transparency. Now, for years, every iPhone has had a secret string of numbers inside it. It's called the IDFA, Identifier for Advertisers. We'll call it your very own ad tracking number, and it's used to help apps identify you and know what you're up to on your phone. So, for instance, say Mr. Cook, let's call him user 098002, has decided to relax and download a new meditation app. The app records his number, and here's the thing. The Facebook app and other apps on his phone also have that number. If that same meditation app wants to try to get Mr. Cook on its mega super relaxing subscription plan, it can go to Facebook and say, hey, let me advertise to user 098002. If Facebook has that number and there's a match, boom, the personalized ad shows up in Mr. Cook's Facebook feed. There's another way this is all used. Say that meditation app shows ads in its feed. It can use Facebook's ad network, which again uses that number to keep track of your other interests and feed you highly personalized ads. So you get it. These user numbers are good for Facebook and other social networks that want to know what we're doing on our phones. And they're good for businesses that want us to buy stuff. But now with iOS 14.5, Apple turns off that ad tracker by default. If an app wants to track you using that number, it will have to ask. If Mr. Cook taps ask app not to track, then his meditation app won't get his number. Apple is giving companies a chance to plead their case with this area right here that explains what the company uses the data for. Don't want those pop-ups at all? You can opt out of all tracking by going to settings, privacy, tracking, and turning off allow apps to request to track. All in all, this is Apple's big play to give people a choice whether they want to be tracked. And chances are more people are going to tap ask app not to track and guess who isn't happy about that all? Eminem, the rapper. Sorry, I mean Mark Zuckerberg. Our custom designs were rush ordered. See, Facebook's business is built on personalized advertising. Instead of charging you to use Facebook, Facebook charges companies to advertise. These ads are targeted at you based on everything Facebook knows about you. Here's an ad Facebook ran in the Wall Street Journal at the end of 2020. We're standing up to Apple for small businesses everywhere. Many in the small business community have shared concerns about Apple's forced software update, which will limit businesses' ability to run personalized ads and reach their customers effectively. Facebook CFO Dave Weiner was clearer about how it will impact Facebook directly on a January 2021 earnings call. We continue to believe that that will be a headwind in the ads business. We're going to have to be providing a prompt asking people for permission to use third-party data to deliver personalized ads. And we do expect there to be high opt-out rates related to that. The company added that the Apple prompt doesn't give enough context about the benefits of personalized ads. Still, while Facebook has said recently that it won't have a big impact to its own business, Facebook seems to be acknowledging that given the choice, users would prefer not to be tracked. A Facebook spokesman said, while Apple claims the update is about privacy, it's about forcing small businesses and developers to charge for apps that were once free, hurting consumers in the process. Free ad-supported services have been essential to the growth and vitality of the internet. 
and were joining others to point out Apple's hypocrisy and anti-competitive behavior. An Apple spokesperson responded, Apps and advertisers can continue to track users across apps and websites as before. App tracking transparency in iOS 14 simply requires that they ask for users' permission before sharing their data with other companies. Supporting small businesses has been at the heart of the App Store since it was created to help developers of all sizes develop, test, and distribute apps around the world. The company also says it has introduced new free tools for advertisers to measure their campaigns while respecting user privacy. As a company based on hardware sales and more recently, more subscription services, Apple has long stood on the side of user privacy. Here's Steve Jobs in 2010. Privacy means people know what they're signing up for in plain English. And some people want to share more data than other people do. Ask them. Ask them every time. And Cook has taken over that mantle and said this in January 2021. If a business is built on misleading users, on data exploitation, on choices that are no choices at all, then it does not deserve our praise. It deserves reform. At its foundation, ATT is about returning control to users, about giving them a say over how their data is handled. But of course, there is benefit to Apple's business. Mr. Cook and his team see privacy and other security features like encryption as a selling point of its hardware and software combo. So two men, two very different business models and two very different visions of how technology and the internet should work for us. And the future fights are going to go way beyond privacy. On that same earnings call from January, Mark Zuckerberg said, I, I do wanna highlight that we increasingly see Apple um, as one of our biggest competitors. He pointed out products like iMessage competes with Facebook's messaging business, which includes WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook Messenger. Apple has every incentive to use their dominant platform position to interfere with how our apps and other apps work, uh, which they regularly do to preference their own. But where is this really heading? Literally, our heads. The fight for the future of computers, augmented reality glasses. When the tech is ready, and these aren't just big, bulky headsets, these glasses will probably run an operating system made by one of these companies. And it could be a fight bigger than Android versus iOS, or Windows versus Mac. Facebook, which owns Oculus, is investing heavily in the software and hardware side of glasses, and is planning to release some smart glasses in the next year. Now, I can't go into full product details yet, uh, but they're going to be the next step on the road to augmented reality glasses. Apple is working on its own headset, according to various reports. And Tim Cook has shared his interest in augmented reality for years now. And I think AR can help amplify the human connection. I've never been a uh, fan of VR like that because I think it does the opposite. So you see, this change in iOS 14.5 is just the start of this fight. You know what's not going to be happening anytime soon? As for who ultimately wins, there's no telling. But at least with iOS 14.5, the winners are users who have wanted control of their privacy and data. Do you guys do anything else? You just go to the gym all the time? Tim Cook has the same abs as Mark Zuckerberg. They're both ripped.